a few months ago, I created an algorithm that expresses Giant Steps, the song, in any equal tempered key. In the past few months, I've made videos on my YouTube channel that show Giant Steps in a number of harmonic and microtonal remixes. They were all made by this one algorithm. In this video, I walk through how I made that algorithm. As a kind of precursor introduction, Giant Steps is a song by John Coltrane. It's known in part by being a very virtuosic piece, a very cool piece, very fun to play, um, but it also has a, a particular harmonic structure that makes it quite notable. Uh, that harmonic structure has to do with what key it's in. It begins in the key of B, but it actually shares the key centers B, G, and E flat in equal parts throughout the piece. So it's equally in three different keys in some sort of way. And this isn't unusual in itself. We have a lot of pieces of music in the world that share between different keys, but these keys in particular are interesting in their relationship to each other. B, G, and E flat, they are equidistant on a keyboard. They are harmonically each four semitones from one another. And if you take that relationship and you map it onto the circle of fifths, it creates a kind of equilateral triangle, a, a symmetrical harmonic structure. And it's this mathematical peculiarity that really defines the harmonic identity of giant steps. In making this algorithm today, my argument is that giant steps is not about being in the key of B or the key of G or the E flat. It doesn't have anything to do with any particular chords. It actually has all to do with this symmetry. And, and I'll show in a moment, if you can express this symmetry, not just in a triangle, but in a different shape or in a different set of key centers, you can still have giant steps. Something else to know about giant steps is not just the harmonic content of it, but also the melodic structure. This is a bit more conventional, but worth saying that giant steps is set in three separate phrases. And the first two phrases are kind of the same. Uh, you have a descending phrase, and then the second phrase is also descending. It's actually the exact same as the first phrase, just transposed four semitones lower. And then the third phrase is differing. It's a kind of response to these first two verses. Interestingly enough, uh, this is quite similar to how a 12-bar blues is structured, a classic blues structure in which you have a verse, a repeat of that verse, and then a third response phrase. Giant steps, classic blues structure, perhaps. Another, another theory for another time. Um, but I, I, as I said earlier, I feel like the thrust of giant steps is that if you can maintain this harmonic structure, uh, you can have a version of giant steps, a version of giant steps that maybe is not just uh, cycling around three different keys, but maybe one that also cycles around four different keys. Uh, four different keys, it would completely change how long Giant Steps is and how many chords it has and how many notes are in each individual phrase, but yet we can still actually create a version of Giant Steps like this because of this symmetry. I actually made a video um, about a year ago trying this out where Giant Steps is not cycling around major thirds, four semitones, but it cycles around minor thirds, three semitones, and then makes its way around the circle of fifths in that way. Uh, I did this actually for a couple different sort of shapes. Uh, I had giant steps cycle in major seconds, which can be represented as a kind of symmetrical hexagon on the circle of fifths. And I even went the reverse direction. I had giant steps cycling tritones, meaning it just oscillated between two key centers that are equidistant from one another. Uh, and yeah, you can go on my YouTube channel and check out <laughs> all the videos I made. I made probably too many. I have one that cycles half steps as well. Uh, but what's interesting and what I kind of came upon later is that 
uh, you don't just need to do normal chromatic variations of this approach to giant steps. Uh, you can take any shape, maybe a shape that doesn't fit into our 12-tone chromatic scale, that is a shape with a number of sides where that number doesn't equally divide into 12, you can apply that to this giant steps concepts. And I did that about two weeks ago. We had a giant steps that cycles one fifth of an octave, which means it starts in the key of B, but the four other keys that it's in are not on our equal tempered 12 tone system. It's a microtonal remix. And you could continue this logic doing eighths of an octave, or honestly, even you could you could try an, an infinities, infinitieth of an octave, the, the eternal giant steps, the platonic limits, the asymptote of giant steps, one might imagine with this kind of theorizing. Um, but but all this theorizing, how did it actually turn into an algorithm? How how do we actually express this as a set of mathematical relationships? Um, that's what I want to break down here. So I'm going to go through the harmony of giant steps, not talking about notes and chords, but talking about that symmetrical math relationship. These are the chords of giant steps. And these chords uh, are now here in this diagram associated with their given key. So the first chord B is in the key of B, but the second two chords, D7 to G major seventh, these are both in the context of G major. It's a five to one motion, a five to one motion in E flat, and then a two five one motion in G, so on and so forth. And looking at the first phrase, that first phrase is cycling from the key of B to the key of E flat, stopping at G in the middle. And if we take that journey on the circle of fifths, it's as if we were rotating counterclockwise. Okay, let's keep that in our brain and look at the second phrase. The second phrase, we are also rotating counterclockwise, going from G to E flat to B. But uh, instead of starting on the key of B, we start on the key of G and go counterclockwise and kind of return to B. And then if we look at the third phrase, we are still rotating counterclockwise, but this time starting on the key of E flat. And we rotate counterclockwise, modulating from E flat to G to B to E flat, and then back to B. And so giant steps as a, um, as a process is a, it cycles counterclockwise around the circle of fifths and specifically the point at which each phrase begins is either on the starting key of B or it is adjacent to B. That is to the right of B, G, or the left of B on E flat. If we look at this same phrase in the minor thirds version where it cycles minor thirds around four key centers, we can see that it starts on B and then phrase two would start on D and phrase three would start in A flat, they don't ever start on F. And the same thing goes for that microtonal version of giant steps where it cycles around, um, around fifths of an octave. It's always beginning on the first chord, B, which here I've represented just as the number one. And then it begins on number two and then number five, which you can think of as one minus one or one plus one. It's like the key center plus or minus one. And now I'm saying plus or minus one and, and all that math brings us to the boom, algorithm time. Uh, algorithm time where if we have a variable n, and we'll just say n is the number of key centers, three key centers, four key centers, n equals three, n equals four. And that n will determine a list, uh, an array of n key centers that we'll call the index. And so we'll say if we're in the key uh, one, that might be B, and then two might be E flat. Uh, and you can kind of see this at the bottom. If N equals three, then index is B, E flat, and G, where the first, second, and third keys of giant steps. And then I made a little pseudo, pseudo code way of saying that we can put in Roman numerals to say it's not just the chord B, 
the chord G, the chord E flat, but it's the uh, sort of the 251 of B, the 251 of E flat, so on and so forth. And so using these three tools, we can express a sort of pseudocode way of giant steps in which regardless of if giant steps is cycling uh, major thirds, minor thirds, fifths of an octave, infinity, infinitieths of an octave, as long as we plug in that N, we can express saying that giant steps begins with uh, the first chord of phrase one, and then it modulates counterclockwise, which I've sort of written out here as a kind of for loop. Uh, and then there's a two, five, one that sets it up for the adjacent chord. That is the chord that, uh, or the adjacent process, the adjacent chord, not B, but beginning on G right here. And then it goes counterclockwise. And then it begins on the other side on the E flat and goes all the way around, this time expressing as a two, five, one rather than just a 5-1 motion. Um, I'm not going through like step-by-step step of the code because honestly, I didn't use this code to actually make the, I didn't use this code to make the actual videos that I put on YouTube. This code was just for fun. It was just a little nerdy exercise thinking about abstraction and theorization. I actually built these videos using a program called Open Music. Uh, Open Music is a kind of visual software for programming in Lisp, and it's a great way to make MIDI files, especially microtonal MIDI files. So you can kind of see here if it's uh, clear enough on the video resolution, um, just kind of like a visual representation of that code. It only makes MIDI files, and I wanted to also have the chord changes listed in these remixes and so I kind of just did some math to calculate the like approximate chords that this would be plus or minus a couple hertz for the microtonal remixes and in the end you get something like giant steps in fifths of an octave uh, which is playing right here but you know, go, go listen to it on my YouTube channel if you want to hear it um, great so thanks for listening Hopefully you learned something or nothing. Uh, let me know in the comments if you learned something or nothing. And uh, yeah, see you later in another video.